This is the new smart number one EV, just been launched in China, coming to a lot of other countries as well. 560 kilometer range, price pretty good. Hello my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. I'm coming to hear from Indonesia. Those of you who have been watching the channel lately, I'm in Indonesia, but this will be my last day making videos here in Indonesia, back to wintry, cold Melbourne, Australia. I know many of the viewers of the channel right now are in summer, so I hope you're enjoying your summer. I hope it's warm wherever you are. Smart. The Smart Number 1 was launched officially in China yesterday on the 6th of June. And this new model, which is a pure electric SUV, was designed by Mercedes-Benz and based on Geely's SEA architecture. It's not only the first Smart model to be launched since Geely Daimler took over the Smart brand, but also it's the largest Smart car made so far. I mean, as you know, Probably most of you have seen these little tiny little smart cars around different parts of the world and they are minuscule. This thing is literally more than twice the size of some of those little vehicles you would have seen getting around. And thus the price. The price starts at $28,500 US dollars, tops out at $34,500 US, which might seem expensive by Chinese vehicle standards. I mean, Chinese vehicles, EVs are actually very, very good, but the price is often even better. In this case, it does seem high considering other products on the market for similar prices. That said, I've got to say, I really, really like the simple kind of classy design in the interior. I'm not so sure about the kind of look of the touchscreen. Looks a little bit, um, I don't know, it just looks a bit odd with a really thick bezel around the edges. Like the screen doesn't go to the edges and there's a big thick piece of black plastic around the edge that to me is very kind of 2015 but maybe that's just the marketing image and it won't look like that in the flesh i don't know who knows we'll see hey eh? as you can see it's kind of a retro styled steering wheel and it's got a 64 interior ambient lights so 64 different colors you can use in the interior to i don't know impress your um disco friends <laughs> i'm not a big fan of this whole 64 colors i've seen this in mercedes benzes mercedes love this kind of thing they have purple lights they have blue lights they have green lights and you know it's cool for kids but to be honest i'm not sure how many adults really want that kind of thing anyway maybe you do maybe you don't whatever there's a 9.2 inch personalized lcd instrument display that's for the driver looking straight ahead and then there's a 12 point inch central control touchscreen not overly big for china there's plenty of cars with bigger screens, but it's a, still a good size. That said, looking at that screen close up, it does definitely look like a dated product. It does look like something that has been around for a fair few years. What about technology? What does it have? It comes with ADAS, an intelligent assisted driving system, which supports a long lineup of different driving aids. Something Mercedes are pretty well known for. What does it get? Adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, blind spot monitoring, traffic jam assist, intelligent parking, and a number of other safety features. Five seats, foldable rear seats that support a 13 centimeter front and rear sliding range. So you can get a pretty, pretty good amount of foot room in the back seat if you're not gonna fill up the boot. Which would be cool if you wanna put in some big basketball players in that back seat. You could get some pretty tall people in there by sliding that seat back. Luggage space. The trunk's actually pretty small. It's only 323 liters, which is smaller than a lot of different hatchbacks. So I'm not really sure why that's so small, but if you put the seats down, you can expand that interior space to 986 liters. It does have a front trunk as well, but that's only got a 15 liter storage capacity, which is obviously very small. One thing I like about this car, right? It's got plenty of power and it's rear wheel drive. It's called an SUV. I'm not sure I'd call it an SUV. I really don't think it's an SUV, but anyway, it's got 200 kilowatts and 343 newton meters of torque. And because of that, pretty ample power. It can do 0 to 100 or 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.7 seconds. The motor is driven by a 66 kilowatt hour ternary lithium battery pack with a driving range CLTC of 535 kilometers 
or 560 kilometers depending on the model. So really real world range, you're probably looking at more like 400 kilometers, which is still a pretty good range. What about charging speed? Well, charging the battery to 80% takes seven and a half hours using AC slow charging, which is what you'd use at home. Then it will take 30 minutes with a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. So I can do 150 kilowatt fast charging. That's its top speed. So what's the actual size? Well, the length is 4,270 millimeters. That makes it 168 inches long. It's 1,822 millimeters wide, 71.7 inches wide, and it's 1,636 millimeters high, or 64.4 inches. It has a 2,750 millimeter long wheelbase. That's 108 inches. So you can see here, it's, well, just a little bit longer than a BYD EA1. So the key question I have for you is, the BYD EA1 is a lot cheaper than this. A lot, lot cheaper. Uh, I think it's way better value when you think about it. You're going to save about 10,000 US dollars by buying a different brand. Essentially, it's just a different brand. And I think maybe it could be a better product. Maybe not. Depends on you know your perception of what better is. But frankly, considering the size of this car, it does seem significantly overpriced for the Chinese car market. That is unless Chinese consumers perceive the smart brand as being upmarket or some sort of, um, you know, Porsche rival or something like that. I don't think they do, but, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know what you think. Let me know which one you would buy. Would you prefer the EA1, the Dolphin, the Addo 2, whatever you want to call it, which costs about 10,000 US dollars left for, for fairly similar specifications? Would you buy this? Once again, it's great to see more EVs come to market regardless, because this is an electric car that will be available in a lot of different countries all around the world. Smart is a global brand. It's a well-recognized brand. I look forward to seeing them in as many countries as possible. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.